Chief Executive of the Migrants' Rights Network. Uh, great to have you on the programme uh, this afternoon. Uh, you were watching that uh, report with us, uh, and it seems that uh, one problem is being solved, which is uh, 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 the backlog of asylum cases, but it's creating this new problem. What, what's your experience of how bad things have got? Yeah, I mean, firstly, I want to just say how heartbreaking it is to hear and witness anyone being on the streets, especially in these kind of wintry conditions. We've got storm, storms coming um, and then to have to face hostility as well for, for having no option but to put themselves up in a tent. What we have heard is that people are still receiving uh, what we call a seven day eviction notice. Um, people who have gone through the streamlined asylum process from Sudan and Eritrea have recently been receiving these notices. Uh, and so that, that issue that um, is growing is growing by the day. Um, we know that the Home Office has said, well, this eviction notice process was temporary and it's only been started in August and it was only meant to be for that month. Um, in practice, that doesn't seem to be the case. Um, and so we really want to understand why the government is essentially feeling like being cruel by design in um, forcing people out onto the streets and as as your uh, kind of uh, the other commentator said, pushing this burden onto the local authorities and to local organisations to have to deal with. Um, yeah, yeah. The, I mean, the, the government says as, as, as the legacy backlog reduces, we continue to work with local authorities to manage the impact of asylum decisions. Some £2 billion has been provided to councils to tackle homelessness and, and rough sleeping. But it seems the problem has got uh, really big really quickly. Ju just explain what the process is for uh, an asylum seeker who has had their claim accepted. Uh, they were in asylum uh, uh, seeker accommodation, but now the time is pretty limited that they have to, to actually get out. Yes, so when someone had their refugee status kind of it's, it, uh, given, granted, um, they're given usually 28 days um, notice to leave the accommodation. And within that time period, they need to approach the local authority or find their own private rented accommodation. 28 days in itself was always a, a very short time scale and there is evidence that the 28 days wasn't enough. People were still ending up on the streets and homeless um, because again, the local authorities haven't got enough housing. Um, they aren't uh, funded enough to provide even emergency accommodation. Now, as I said, since August, this seven day eviction notice has been um, issued by the Home Office where people have had their assignment when they've had their refugee status granted, have been given seven days notice to leave the accommodation and find an alternative um, space to live. Um, so that has accelerated um, the pressure on the local authorities and the local organisations in terms of the homelessness that they're, that, that they're witnessing. Yeah, and of course it's uh, councils who are already under pressure because of uh, Ukrainian uh, refugees and uh, Afghans as well. So what, what do you think the, the solution is? You've touched on this already, but just give us a bit more detail as, as to what would be an answer. I mean, I, I appreciate the Home Office say that they're working with the local authorities in, in dealing with the, the kind of the backlog and, and people being granted refugee status. I don't think that's actually happening in reality. What they do need is those local conversations with the local authorities, but with the refugee organisations and the local and the large homelessness organisations so that there's a proper plan in place. What we would want to see is the Home Office to understand that um, that these people, as you know, as again your video suggests, like how how we can create more safety and make sure that their experiences, uh, once they are granted refugee status, is also about protecting them and keeping them safe. And so we would want them to consider um, to give them that support, that accommodation, that shelter, that safety until they are able to find that alternative accommodation, whether that's the local authority or whether that's being given proper, adequate um, and robust support to move into the private rented sector. Mm. OK. All right. Well, thank you for explaining that. Fiza Qureshi, uh, CEO of the Migrants' Rights Network. Uh, appreciate your time. Thank you. Now, lava is continuing to flow from that volcano in southern Iceland with more...